we are about to start finding um, surface area and volume of 3D figures. So today I want to kind of break this up. Um, I will introduce to you some formulas and hopefully how they work as well. Hopefully you'll, you'll grasp that. Um, so we're going to just break up that formula that you don't know yet, and I'm going to show you how to find values for what we're going to call big P and big B, or capital P and capital B. This is page 150, 151, no, this is page 153 in our binders. And we're just going to start out with what, what are P and B? What are these things? Um, big P is just a variable that we use in place of the perimeter of the base. Sometimes, instead of a perimeter, we'll have a circular base, so it might also be a circumference. The distance around the base. Capital B, or big B, is the variable that we use in place of the area of the base. And the, these are in 3D figures. Um, especially if you have a prism, the base is not always what we're standing on. So if you have a prism, you just need to make sure that your base is parallel to another shape that is identical to it. What does that look like? Um, let me, let's look at this first rectangular prism here. I'm going to draw some dotted lines so we can see the other faces. So hopefully that's a little more clear now. You can see the back and the front, the two sides, and the bottom and the top. So if I were to say that what I'm sitting on, so this bottom base here, is the base, it has to, because this is a prism, it has to have a parallel base to it. The parallel matching exact same shape base is this top figure. You could also say that you're using the two sides. Those are the exact same shape parallel to each other. You could also say that you're using the back and the front rectangle as well. because I could move this um, prism to be sitting on any other side. So I could set them down on the pink sides, in which case the, this front and this back that you are not being able to see anymore because I have colors everywhere um, would be the bases. I could flip it on its uh, side and then the blue sections would be the bases or keep it down here on the yellow, so the yellow sides are the bases. Um, just because they haven't defined it, I'm going to say that the yellow ones are the bases, so I'm using my yellow bases here. I'm going to redraw that base. I'm going to redraw the yellow base, which I now see is definitely a rectangle. Now let's label the base. So this portion on my base, on my yellow figure, is 9. And then the yellow figure is the one that goes in and out of our page, so right here. So this length is 5, and this is in inches. Okay, so I've got a rectangle. Remember, big P stands for the perimeter. To find big P, we're just going to add all the sides of this base. So I'll have 9 plus 5 plus 9 plus 5. 9 plus 5 plus 9 plus 5. That gets us 18 and 10 is 29. So the perimeter is 29, 29 inches. To find the area of a rectangle, we're going to use the formula base times height. Base, I could say, is 5. If I say the base is 5, the height is anything that makes a 90 degree angle with the 5. The 90 degree angle with 5 is 9, so then the height would be 9. 
you could have easily said that the base is 9. What makes a 90 degree angle with 9? The side 5. So instead of 5 times 9, you guys would have 9 times 5. Either way, you get 45. This is an area, so our units are squared. So here I see the perimeter is 29 inches, and the area of the base is 45 inches squared. Looking at the next shape, we've got all of the sides here are the same. So this isn't a rectangular prism, or it's a special type. This is a special type of rectangular prism that we call a cube. I'm going to say that the top face and the bottom face are my bases. I'm going to redraw the base. This part of my base is 7 feet. This part of my base is 7 feet. That means I know this is 7 and this is also 7. Now let's find the perimeter of the, the base. To find the perimeter, you add all of the sides. So when I add all the sides, we get 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7. 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7 is 28. So the perimeter of the base, this is a capital P, that's the perimeter of the base is 28, the units are in feet. Now we'll find the area of the base, or capital B. That should have been a capital B over here. So this shape is a square, the base is a square. So to find the area of the base, I'm using the formula S squared. A is S squared. Well, S is just any side on my square. Any side on my square is 7. So A is 7 squared. 7 squared is 49. So the area of the base is 49 units. Um, this is an area, so that would be squared, units squared, feet squared. 49 feet squared. We've looked at some, some uh, rectangular prisms. One of them was a special rectangular prism called a cube. This is called a cube because all three side lengths are the same. Looking now at some triangular prisms. Notice I said prism. We are looking at triangular prisms. So the base is not what it's sitting on. The shape that this prism is sitting on is a rectangle, a really long rectangle. But for in a prism, my bases have to match and be parallel to each other. There is not a rectangle in this shape that is parallel to this rectangle. There are only two other rectangles, the two sides, and those aren't parallel to this rectangle because they all meet at a point. We name prisms based on their base. So if I call this a triangular prism, then the base has to be a triangle. I see a triangle right here. And it does have an exact identical matching triangle parallel right there, the front and the back triangles. I'm going to redraw the base. That way I can isolate some information about it. This base tells me that the sides are five, sorry, the, um, the slanted sides are five. The bottom is six, and it gives me the height as four. I know it's the height because it makes a 90 degree angle with the bottom side. So I've redrawn my base, which is a triangle. So this is a triangular prism, and I have a triangle base. I first want to find capital P. To find capital P, I have to add all of the outside sides or the around the triangle sides. That would be five, the other five, 
and the 6. 5, 5, and 6 make 16, and we are measuring this in meters. Now I want to find capital B, which is the area of my base. The area of a triangle formula is 1 half the base times the height. So I'm looking at 1 half the two numbers that form a 90 degree angle together are 6 and 4. So 1 half times 6 times 4. Half of 6 is 3, and 3 times 4 is 12. So the area of the base is 12. The units are meters, so 12 meters squared. Looking at this next prism, again it's sitting on a tri on a rectangle. Sorry, it's sitting on a rectangle, but this rectangle doesn't have any other rectangles that never ever touch it. This long rectangle, one isn't the same size, but also it meets at those corners. This up and down rectangle, maybe it's exact, but it does not. It's not parallel because it meets at those sides. The shape that is parallel are these triangles in the front and the back, the front and the back faces. Okay. Now I've got my bases highlighted. It will make it a lot easier for me to redraw them. So I'm going to redraw my triangle and label this. This is 8, 6, and 10. You might remember from our Pythagorean theorem unit, that's a Pythagorean triple. If not, you can verify that, which means this is a right triangle. Now I'm ready to find the perimeter of the base because I've redrawn my triangular base. The perimeter of the base, well, this is a triangle, so I just have to add all of the sides. To add all of my sides, I'm adding 8, 6, and 10. 8 plus 6 plus 10 is 24. So the perimeter of the base is 24 inches. Now let's look at the area of the base. Capital B is the area of the base. The formula for the area of a triangle is 1 half the base times the height. So area is half times whatever two things make a 90 degree angle. It's going to be 8 and 6. So 1 half times 8 times 6. Half of 8 is 4. 4 times 6 is 24. So the area of the base, capital B, is 24 units inches squared. Now we're going to look at a special type of prism. The prism that we're going to look at has got circular bases. So instead of calling it a prism, we call it a cylinder. This is a cylinder. These are cylinders. It's just a prism with a circular base. It might be difficult to see the circle. Hopefully that makes it a little easier. This is still a type of prism, so I know that the base is just going to be whatever I have, whatever shape has an identical matching shape that is parallel, so never touches it. So if I were to stretch out those, uh, this shape, the two circles would never, never cross each other. So those circles are parallel, and they are the same exact shape, same exact size. So those are the bases in the cylinder. The circles are the bases in a cylinder. First, I'm going to redraw my base. Now I see this is 12. That means that the diameter is 12 because that's going all the way across the circle through the middle. The radius is just half of that, which is 6. 
we're wanting to find the circumference in the area of the base. To find the circumference of the base, I'm using the formula. I can either use 2 pi r, or I can use pi times the diameter. I think most of us like using 2 pi r, so let's just go with that. Then I'm using 2 times pi, and the radius is 6. 2 times pi times 6. Now, if you wanted your answer to be exact, you would rearrange your multiplication. 2 times 6 is 12 pi. So the exact answer for circumference is 12 pi, but we're going to round that using the pi button. So let's look at 12 times pi, or 12 pi, hit enter, and our calculator gives us 37.69911184. I'm just going to round this to be 6, or sorry, 37 and 7 tenths, 37.7. to hopefully hammer it in that pi is not exactly 3.14. If I had taken that 12 and multiplied it by 3.14 instead of pi, we're going to get close to 37.6991184, but we won't be exact. We're at 37.68. So there's some rounding errors there, and that's okay if you're using 3.14 as an estimate. I just need you guys to be aware that using the pi symbol on your calculator will get you a more appropriate answer for the 8th grade unless you are told specifically to use 3.14 for pi, I want us utilizing the calculators um, to get more exact answers. So we've got 37 and 7 tenths for the circumference, and this is measured in yards, 37.7 yards. Using 3.14 or about 3 is a good way to do some mental math with pi. I could say 12 times about 3 would get me around 36, and 36 is kind of close to 37. If I'm just looking for a general area estimate, using 3 instead of 3.14 is a good idea. Or if you can multiply with the decimals in your head, that's also a good idea to use 3.14. Just be aware that when we're using pi, unless our answer is in terms of pi, then we don't have an exact answer. Just really close. Now we're looking for capital B. Capital B stands for the area of the base. So I want the area of my circle. The area of a circle is using the formula pi r squared. So we'll use pi times r squared. Well, r is 6, so this is 6 squared. 6 squared is 36, so I've got 36 times pi. I just swapped the multiplication there with the commutative property. And if I want to guesstimate, or sorry, uh, get a good estimate, I've got 36 times pi, 113 and a tenth. So I'm going from exactly 36 pi to 113.1. And that's yards squared, because this is an area and our units are in yards. Looking at the next uh, cylinder, this is just a prism with a circular base. I'm going to identify that circular base. There's the circular base. I'm going to now redraw the circular base. And this gives us this length here as 2. So that's my radius is 2 because it only goes halfway across to the circle through the center of the circle. Um, if the radius is 2, then the diameter is just twice whatever the radius is. Twice of 2 is 4, or 2 times 2 is 4. Now that I have the radius and the diameter, I'm ready to start finding the circumference and the area of this base. To find the circumference, I'll use the formula either 2 times pi times r, or I'll use pi times d. Um, just because I used 2 pi r in the last example, I'll use the formula pi times d in this example. 
So that is pi times 4, or 4 pi. 4 pi is the exact answer. We can guesstimate, sorry, get a good estimate, estimate of 4 pi. The estimate of 4 pi is about 12.57, 12 and 57 hundredths, 12.57. And this is measured in millimeters. 12.57 millimeters for the circumference of the base. Big B is the area of the base. So I need the area of a, our base is a circle. I need the area of a circle formula, which is pi r squared. So I'm using pi times r is 2 squared, 2 squared. Pi times 2 squared, 2 squared is 4. So we have 4 pi, which we know from the circumference is about 12.57 millimeters. Uh, but this is an area, so it's squared. We've got 12.57 millimeters squared. Okay. Um, if you have questions or concerns about the content in this video, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. You can message me on Schoology, send me an email, or drop a comment on the video.